now this committee, we allow a couple of interventions from our members. Uh, we hope we'll keep them brief. <coughs> so, uh, so uh, yeah, I could uh, let me be the first to go <coughs> because I was the last to come in. <laughs> um, first of all, your document is not signed. So it's an oversight. It's very um, unusual for both as, as, as respectable as ICJ <coughs> not to give us a document which is not signed. I would urge that this be done. Duly noted. Uh, secondly, well, this question perhaps should have gone to the team that was before you, the Judicial Service Commission. But allow me to pose it to you, because um, you are literally birds with the same feather, a lot of us, a lot of us here. Um, it has been argued that um, by some who appeared before us that the 14 days within which a determination should be made in case of a presidential petition are sufficient because the nation at that particular time is, is on its tender hooks. So much emotion, so much sense of expectation and possible explosions, political explosion, that the matter should be dispensed with expeditiously. And I think that is perhaps why uh, in the petition I was actually, although, although people never seem to know this or remember this, I was actually um, one of the appellants in 2013, and I think again in 2017. Um, but uh, my, my friend Raila is always, always quote, quoted the Raila petition, but that is okay. Um, then judges, as in the case of uh, Chief Justice Emeritus and his team, William Mutunga. To date, I don't think to date that document, that, that, that judgment is quoted anywhere. I know the position the ICJ took and other um, legal uh, bodies, uh, because they said we will give our judgment and follow with the reasoned, um, with the reasons and the judges of the Supreme Court. We've actually even had, um, and this I find very interesting, that judges of the Supreme Court should, uh, should uh, be increased to 11. I find that proposal very, very interesting. Uh, I would want to hear the views of ICJ on that. And, and um, the team before you, Judicial Service Commission, opined that um, um, the period within which this matter should be determined should be within 30 days. I had you pronounce 28 days. Um, a day in a presidential election petition is a very important thing. Um, and they say uh, uh, one day in politics is so critical. A week in politics is very, very critical. Um, so the difference between 28 days and 30 days could be very interesting, or indeed 14 days. We would want you to guide uh, the thinking of this committee in this very important matter, because it does fall squarely within the province uh, or the mandate of this committee to be able to make recommendations. Therefore, I, I, I thank this ECJ, I mean ICJ. In your presentation also, you, you said that uh, uh, the Commission, IBC, has uh, suffered um, injustice in many ways. Uh, removal, according to your presentation, of uh, IBC secretariat staff. And where I'm coming from, in Nakuru, uh, the Prime Cabinet Secretary was even referring to killings like of Chris Musando, which I found very, uh, very interesting coming from him. Um, there are those staffers who have been killed. But then in your written submission, you, took, you talk of uh, politically motivated, politically motivated removal of commissioners themselves. But in your verbal presentation, you ignored that. 
uh, is it uh, a slip of some kind? Is it, uh, or is it that you are thinking more in terms of the staffers as opposed to political, political removal? Of, uh, I'm referring to page six, I think it is, on electoral justice. This can be demonstrated through politically motivated removal of commissioners, failure to appoint competent commissioners, and all of that. And therefore, we take um, opinion by ICJ very seriously. I personally do take uh, opinion of this. And we therefore chose to invite you and thank you for coming. But um, those are my initial uh, comments, uh, or indeed, um, um, I, I just wanted to posit that as a matter on which you can give us further reflection, one or two issues, so that we can make this country better for all of us and for future generations. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm getting, keep it very brief, please. The three, four of us have been here since 10, oh, okay, nine. Okay. And you went without lunch, did you? Yes, nine, from nine o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sure you did um, something. You right? didn't get, you will send us a detailed brief. I want you to give yes. a, a suggestion on a solution to the problems we have. You have mentioned that uh, we should periodically do a national audit of ethnic and regional composition of public officers. We did such an audit on recruitment of uh, KRA staff at Senate. We found the ethnic imbalance, but we really don't have a solution. Can you enrich your document and maybe make a proposal? What should be the, the consequences? Then number two, uh, page seven, you have said we should establish a clear role between the commissioners and chairpersons and the chairperson of the IEPC Commission. Uh, what are you having in mind? You, if you read maybe Article 138 on tallying and verifying the, the election's outcome, how can we distribute these roles so that the commissioners feel that they are part of the, the commission? Do you have any suggestion? Finally, uh, at times you are, the, you are the ones who lead uh, litigations in court on uh, public participation. You can see the last page you have said these discussions should be people-centered and not just by politicians. From where you are sitting as ICJ, uh, are you satisfied with the process that we have undertaken at BOMAS? We have invited the public, they have presented their views. Do we meet that standard of people-centered? process. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, when you say that uh, we need to expeditiously appoint the commissioners on the basis that we are crippling these institutions, uh, part of what has delayed this process is actually the work of this committee. In your view, how urgent is that? Is that the constitution of IBC? And do you support the panel process or do you have any particular suggestions as to how the commissioners can be appointed? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, can, uh, you can say something. My, my colleague Julie will start with the response. Uh, thank you very much, Chair Parsons. Um, I want to recognize the presence of a few ICJ Kenya members on the panel, but I will not name names. So thank you for the opportunity to present. Um, on the oversight, on the signed document, I agree. It was a complete oversight. We will make amends, and the full document will be signed and stamped. Um, on the question of the 14-day issue, it is actually something that we began conversations about prior to the 27, 2022 election. We thought in our opinion that as per the draft of the Constitution, I think we had envisioned having either one or two petitions at the Supreme Court. But I think 2022 showed us that it's pot there is potential for more. So having seven petitions before the court with a time limit of 14 days is not reasonable. And with that, we hope that that can be considered. So either two-pronged conversations. We either limit the amount of people who can petition before the court during that process, one, or we extend the number of days. 
the number of days would allow the petitioner sufficient time to even gather their evidence because we saw that as a big challenge because of the timelines as well as the scrutiny process. And I think that would be better addressed with an extended amount of days. 28 days is not ideal. I don't think we will get to an ideal number of days in Kenya because any lawyer will give you a reason for 60 days, 30 days, 28 days or 14 days. But from our submissions, I think 28 days would be ideal because it would be a double, but it's also something that we can discuss and the wear of the shoe knows where it hurts. So if the judiciary is proposing 30 days, I think we are also amenable to consider 30 days. Um, on the conversation of increasing of judges, I think we have actually been at the unfortunate draw of a lack of a quorum at the Supreme Court. And I think it's something that ought to be considered. Increasingly, we are having a lot of matters that need the, con the Supreme Court's interpretation and guidance, all the way coming from all the, equal, the courts of equal status at the High Court, but also the Court of Appeal because of the appellate nature of our processes. And I think the Supreme Court needs more judges. However, the balance as to 9 or 11 is something we ought to discuss and ought to, conv ought to engage in further research because of the merits as well as the budget implications of increasing the numbers. There is a budgetary implication to a Supreme Court judge. So I think that is something that requires further research. As ICJ Kenya, one of our approaches to our work is research. We can undertake to do that research. We do not know whether we will comply with the timelines of this committee, but I know that that is research that we can undertake to see where, where Kenya ought to be in terms of representation of the Supreme Court in terms of numbers, appreciating the extended role of the Chief Justice and also the role of the uh, judge who sits as a commission of the JSC. Um, also going into the conversation around the, the reconstitution of the IBC, I think um, in regards to the fact that we already have a selection panel that is in place, and they are per se waiting for the decision of this committee to continue with their work because we do not want to do the process all over again because of the recommendations of this committee. It would have been ideal if this committee had sat first before the selection panel had been constituted, but that would be an ideal situation. But we are where we are. And I think one thing that we could recommend to this in the, more, the longer version would be a broader, um, a broader inclusion at the selection committee. We know that there is no civil society represented at the selection panel, which I think is a really great oversight. We can organize ourselves as civil society and bring forth a name for consideration with both male and female for voting if need be. But I think that is a grave oversight. Um, the law society is represented, uh, the, re the religious community is represented, but civil society who actually represent the voice of the people are not at the table. And I think that was a very grave oversight. So ideally we should consider reconstituting the panel. In regards to having more political party representation at the selection panel, I think one thing that is actually a conversation and a, co a cause of concern is the fact that IBC needs to be independent. And the people who select the IBC commissioners matter just as much as the IBC commissioners. So we cannot have a situation where the selection panel looks very leaning to the political class because it will create the same narrative that we already have, which is political mistrust, I mean, pu public mistrust in the IBC. So I would implore this committee to really consider reconstituting the selection committee because how you create the selection committee will actually dictate how Kenyans will perceive the commissioners who come into office. I thank you. I think uh, we're okay. Thank you very, very much, ICJ. Uh, and thanks for the support to governor's work, to the support to public interest litigation, to a lot of the support you have even given us individually and collectively as a society. And I do take kindly the words that uh, uh, we, can, we have to get civil society involvement in part of these processes. But just do, ex do suggest to us how that is done, because civil society is such a broad uh, animal, and therefore we want to know. Uh, you know, LSK is very specific, IRC is very specific, and religious council, uh, state institutions or independent commissions are very specific. What is uh, civil society in terms of representation? A proposal will, will suffice. Thank you very, very much. You're also recused. Just to the, for, the, for the attention of Imogen and the Secretariat, uh, Governor Barire has said that the COG has requested that uh, they... Yeah, I've, I've said they've been recused. I mean, I was speaking as they are walking out. Mm.
so I was, I was re- imagine, I was re- they were requesting that they be hired at 2 p.m. on the basis that uh, for, for, for an alternative time, because at uh, 8 uh, or there about, they've been uh, re- asked uh, someone to, to attend a meeting, yes, at uh, the Deputy President's uh, office in terms of IBEC, I think. What time? So they asked for 2 p.m. Yeah, or an alternative time that would work. Mm. The, the morning is where they are slotted for, and unfortunately they have to attend a meeting at the deputy president's. Uh, yes, meeting. But we have got truth. People appearing uh, virtually at two. You can do it then after that virtual appearance. I can communicate to Cecily about that. Mm. I think uh, we will communicate yeah. to us. Thank you very much. Yeah. I think since the the governors will be in town, let's 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 take advantage of them when they're in town tomorrow. Yeah.